that would require $5.2 trillion, and it would have to be almost all federal jobs program. Combination of the New Deal and World War II level spending. Why? For two reasons. One, all the jobs that have been lost are in the private sector. Yet we hear this nonsense of the Obama regime that in two years, you'll create three million private jobs and 90% will be private. But the nonpartisan Congressional Budget Office, their office, not mine, has said that those jobs are fiction. It's fiction. Why is that? Because there are no private employers. Okay? No solvent private employers. It's part of the economic crisis which they created. The second and most important reason why we need to spend the 37% of gross domestic product is because in order to create demand. Demand is the engine of the economy. It doesn't matter what economy, where, ever. Demand drives the economy. Demand. Yet we hear not a word about demand. All we hear about is banks. As if the banks were crucial. It doesn't matter whether the causes of the present economic crisis are different from those of the Great Depression. The similarities are there. Both require demand. It's very significant that after passing the tiny, insignificant, piddling, 787 billion stimulus plan the very next day. Obama started talking about having the deficit, cutting the deficit in half. When he knows, and he should know, and of course he does know, that in an economic crisis, the federal deficit is totally and completely irrelevant. Totally and completely irrelevant. After World War II, the federal deficit was federal deficit was gigantic. But the demand created by World War II and the New Deal spending, all of the subsequent spending under Eisenhower, the highways program, etc., and the 91% tax rate under Eisenhower. Remember the capitalists have abolished the progressive tax structure in the United States. All that is remaining is the regressive tax structure, which most thinking people oppose. But it's a fact, I'm 67 years old, 35 years a professional revolutionary. My name is Debreman, I'm the coordinator of the United Front Against Racism and Capitalism and Imperialism. I grew up in the late 40s and the 50s and the 60s, and I'm still growing up. And I can assure you that in the 1950s, there was the greatest economic prosperity the United States has ever had. Why? Because of the reasons I gave. The man was there. There was enough money for everything. Today, the capitalists have stolen virtually every last penny. Every last penny. They've done it three ways. Three ways primarily. The fundamental way that capitalism appropriates and expropriates wealth is to expropriate the surplus value of our labor, our meaning the working class and its allies, meaning that the capitalists expropriate all the money that we don't need, or we don't use, or is not sufficient for our
living in order to build a basis for their profits. That's the fundamental whole surplus value and the basis for capitalist expropriation of wealth. But in the 1980s, the late 1980s, they decided that they had another steam going. They would call it supply-side economics. They would call it trickle-down economics. They would call it Reaganomics. And then they would call it push-pass-cost economics, most recently. Now, it's a fact that the Reagan's economic czar, whose name was David Stockman, he lives in Connecticut, the whole thing. David Stockman said that the purpose of supply side economics, oh, I should mention the name of the book which David Stockman wrote. It was entitled The Triumph of Capitalism Why the Reagan Revolution Failed. And in that book, David Stockman revealed that. The purpose of supply-side economics, trickle-down economics, Reaganomics, was to divert money from social spending and to slam the door shut on social spending, as he so eloquently put it. It was also mentioned 